Hello and welcome back to Supernova. We will be doing the little interlude that was just released recently, which I think sort of goes with each route, so regardless of the character you pick, this will be the same. It also um, will, I think, revolve around a certain villain character who we'll see and um, what we already know of, but yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, it should be a very short... Um, like maybe 15 20 minutes so yeah anywho uh let's you know see what it is interlude the champion the heavy door lets out a shrill sound as the guard swings it open for me with the main entrance closed for the night i pay my visit from a side alleyway the guard swings his submachine gun like an idiot as he scans my face. At least his buddy, currently standing off to the side and observing me, seems to have a good trigger discipline. The boss is waiting for you upstairs. He points to the elevator down the hall. Top floor. He gets a nod of response. I can feel their eyes on my back as I press the button. I hate these things. Always feels like I'm stepping into a trap. Even if I know that I could bash my way out of here, it puts me on edge. Worse than usual. Of course, there's a camera staring at me from the corner. I stare right back, counting the seconds until the elevator finally goes up to my destination. I'm greeted by two more guards as I step into the hallway. Wonder how many are stationed across the building. With how tall it is, my main concern would be guarding the elevator shafts. Unless your enemies can fly. Up on the roof. Guess the bull isn't concerned about that, or he has more tricks up his sleeve to ensure his safety. Gotta keep an eye out. What's my host doing up there anyway? The bull is across from me, speaking to some woman I don't know. But while he is the one I came to talk with, it's the rest of the people on the roof that draw my eye. The man leaning against the wall to my right with his arms crossed at his chest. He was there the last time too, and like before, the tiger is dressed like the guard from downstairs, but he's not visibly armed. My presence only elicits a raised eyebrow before he goes back to looking bored, his posture completely relaxed. Meanwhile, off to the side at the edge of the building, another man, a zebra, is tied to a chair and gagged. The only thing separating him from a very long fall is the waist-high concrete. What the hell did I just walk into? There's clearly some kind of meeting, so I hang back, waiting for it to be concluded. This has nothing to do with me. But that doesn't last. As soon as the bull spots me, he waves at me to approach. So I do, making sure my back's not to the tiger. Not about to have him out of my sight. Looky here, my favorite wolf. Mr. Norton. One of your men? I wish. What do you say, Megaton? The offer's still wide open. Don't call me that. You gotta loosen up, boy. It's a great name. But if you don't like it, I have some more suggestions. No need. Alright, fine. Wait, where are my manners, lady? It doesn't matter. I'll let you get back to your meeting. Nonsense! I got nothing to hide here. Not from you two, anyway. Isn't that right, Earl? The last one is apparently addressed at the zebra, who tries to shout something muffled in response. Heh! <laughs> Fucking moron. Gotta deal with you real soon, don't you worry. Can I ask what is happening here? I'm wondering the same lady. Oh, what, him? Well, Lady Zhao, as I had been telling you, I recently concluded a very interesting business deal. And this here absolute genius decided that after 15 years of working for me, 15 years where I had shown nothing but good will, by the way, he'd run off and sell me out. Can you fucking believe it? Right to the Northern Syndicate, and he thought I wouldn't find out. There's another round of muffled shouting. I'm guessing the zebra is trying to dispute the account. 
seems like his side of the story will remain untold. This deal, is it connected to why you called me here? Oh yes, you see, this fella, calls himself the Arbiter, has provided me with some truly unique weapons. Next level stuff, energy beams, lasers, the works. Don't know where he got them, but he has some to sell, and we have an exclusive agreement. He sounds like a small kid excited about a Christmas toy. To the likes of him, that's exactly what this is. I slowly unclench my fist, conscious of the tiger's gaze. This is not why I'm here. I see. Happy for you, Norton. Huh. Think you'll be a little more excited when I show you these babies in action. And of course, I'm offering you a slice of the cake, Lady Zhao. You've been my most valuable partner, after all. The Red Panda raises her eyebrows in apparent surprise. Am I the only one to receive this offer? I would have considered inviting old Jimmy too, but since he decided to hire my men out from under me... I see. Besides, the Northern Syndicate is clearly up to something. My sources tell me that they've been messing with the occult. I didn't expect to be hearing so much about what's going on in the criminal underworld of Nova City tonight. At least it's good to know that the scum is not entirely getting along. The Red Panda is probably some higher up in the drug operation I know has been causing a headache for the police in recent years. I could decapitate to criminal enterprises right here and now. But that's not my fight. Not that it would matter anyway. Kill one bastard, another one comes along to take their place. A cult? Yup. Who knows what shit they're trying to pull with that. Apparently Jimmy acquired some magical trinket recently. But not to worry. He'll be relieved of it soon. What does it do? Norton shrugs. Makes magic easier to use at a distance or something, the way it was explained to me. The response makes me blink, my ears perk up. This could be something we need. Oh, he has someone who can use it? Wouldn't be surprised. You sent your men to steal it? Not quite. Hired a mage to do it for me. This funny little Martin. With the intent to delve into the occult yourself? Huh. Not at all. I wouldn't trust their ilk as far as I could throw them. Although, to be fair, I could throw this Martin pretty far. He laughs at his own joke while Zhao stares off across the city, her expression thoughtful. I have to think fast on how to approach this. It could be nothing, for all I know, not something I'm going to waste my own time pursuing. But if Norton is right... You trust me to bring it back for you? He'll want his payment, no? Not like I care about the object anyway. He can have it. Give it to me. Oh? Didn't realize you had an interest in magic. I stay quiet knowing I can't come up with a believable story to justify my request. Luckily, that seems good enough for the bowl. Huh. You know what? Sure. We'll call it a favor you'll owe me. Those words make me grind my teeth, but I nod. Whatever keeps him happy, for now. Regardless, Jonathan, we have no need of extra arms. Although your offer is much appreciated. The Syndicate might be gunning for me right now. But that doesn't mean that they'll ignore you for long, Zhao. I don't see why. We have no rivalry. And that's why I like you. No grasping for things beyond your reach. You mean because she doesn't challenge you? Norn is very used to being at the top. He's been there for a long time. It's not just Jimmy anyway. The supers are growing more and more brazen. We need measures to protect ourselves. Are your current measures not enough? She's looking at the tiger. So I was right. Huh. Good enough. For now. But they can't be everywhere. Some of my men had an unpleasant encounter with the Sentinel's fox not long ago. I'd like to deter that kind of action. You won't have to worry about that. The Sentinels are going to be preoccupied. Searching for me. 
Not that I'm about to tell him that. That paranoia keeps a scum like him in check. If there's one thing the capes are good for, that would be it. I am more than capable of keeping my operations secure, I assure you. Norton rolls his eyes, seeing he won't take no for an answer, not this easily. Still, I'm surprised that the Red Panda's continued refusal. Without having seen any of these weapons of his, I can tell the bull is serious. Maybe she really is that convinced that she can stay out of trouble and beneath the notice. Or maybe something else is at play here. A part of me wants to look into it, the part that just can't fucking let it go. Norton, meanwhile, with that ever-present smile of his, takes his phone out. Bring the big one up, boys. I think a demonstration is in order. God damn it, he really is like a child itching to show off his new toy. The panda looks as unenthusiastic as I'm feeling. Our eyes meet, she takes a long drag of the cigarette before she turns her attention back to the bull. Norton is wasting no time and I have to play along because he has the reach we need. Two of his men emerge onto the rooftop when carrying a ridiculous, well, I suppose I could call it a gun. Although it looks almost like it should be a barrel of a modern artillery cannon. Norn grasps it around the middle. The muscles on his arms strain with effort, but he maintains his cheerful expression. Zhao and I follow him to the center of the rooftop, where he takes aim at his target. The zebra squirms madly in his restraints, eyes crazed as his words are rendered incomprehensible by the piece of cloth in his mouth. He succeeds in toppling to the side, still bound to the chair. Norton lowers the gun. Sit him up! The guards set the chair upright again, even as the zebra continues jerking around. Don't worry, Earl. I'll make sure your family is taken care of. Wouldn't want Traitor Spawn running around now, would we? With that, he takes aim again and... The blast leaves a hole the size of two fists in the man's torso, the chair and the concrete railing beneath him. Perfectly circular. The zebra shakes violently once and then slumps forward. Huh. We stand in silence as the bull hands the weapon back to his men. That's impractical. Norn chuckles. Oh, I know. I just find this one fun. The rest are far more suited for everyday use. Everyday use. I could build a little turret up here with this. What do you think? Shoot some capes out of the sky? That wouldn't go over well. Huh, I'm kidding. Loosen up, you two. Zhao is still staring at the corpse with slight distaste, I think. Shame about the damage to your building. The comment is met with more laughter from Norton. So? You want some of this? I'm offering a good deal, Lady Zhao. No, I'm afraid my answer is going to stay the same. I feel very secure in my activities, Norton. But I appreciate your generosity. You can count on my support should you even need it. Ha, <laughs> if you say so. Can we talk about why I'm here? Hmm, ah yes, of course. I raise my eyebrows as I look at Zhao. Then back at Norton. He either doesn't realize what I mean, or he doesn't take the hint. The panda isn't in a rush to leave either. Fine, it's not like her knowing will affect anything. Anything new then? As a matter of fact, yes. He retrieves a folded piece of paper from his pocket and hands it to me. A map of the southeastern part of the city, with the block circled in red. It's here, underground. My heart starts to beat faster. But I also found out there's a second facility. I look up at him sharply. Where? I don't know yet. Can you find out? My contacts are looking. I nod, fold the paper up again, and put it in my belt pouch. I'll be back next week. I hope I'll have the info by then. Just know that they'll be on very high alert if you attack too soon. I can feel the pulse in my ears. 
The data we've been looking for, it has to be there. If not at this lab, then the other one. But as much as my fists are itching, the bull is right. I can't miss this opportunity by acting too hasty. Fine, I'll wait until we have both locations. Atta boy. Calm now. Gotta keep my fists unclenched. Thanks. Huh? No need for any of that. I want the damn things gone as much as you do. No favors owed. Well, unless you end up taking my magical hull. Hmm. I'll wait for your Martin's return. I point to the edge of the rooftop. Mind if I skip the elevator? Heh. <laughs> Be my guest. I nod, but as I'm about to walk off, the red panda touches my arm softly. Can we have a word? I see my guest has intrigued you, Lady Zhao. Certainly. Is it too much to presume? Not at all. He winks at her and strides over to the tiger instead. For someone who isn't in his employ, Norton is very open with you about his affairs, isn't he? He hopes I'll agree to work for him, if I see how he runs his show. Is he wrong to have that hope? Yes. I see. May I suggest something? I happen to own a bathhouse, the White Lotus. You should pay a visit sometime. You look like you could use some time to relax. I'm not looking for extra work. Nor am I offering, but I suspect that I know what you're after, and I might have something that you will find interesting. And if not, you will have a pleasant evening of rest. What's your angle, Panda? I don't know what she could possibly have that would help me more than what Norton is doing. She doesn't give me the time to ask, instead she touches my arm again, smiling faintly and walks over to the bull. Damn woman. With no other nonsense keeping me here, I finally take off. It had been windy on top of the building, but it's even more unpleasant up here. Nova sprawls underneath, the trails of lights stretching from the edge of the ocean to the hills in the west, where they get lost in the dark. I hate this city. No, maybe I just hate the view from this vantage point. But then why am I up here? Why do I come back? The metal of the soldier tags is cold against my chest. You would have liked the view, wouldn't you, Tommy? The thought fills me with anger. No, you wouldn't. You would have hated it as much as I do. You were never stupid, not like me. I'm stalling. I don't know why. Maybe because after this, there will truly be no turning back. No, that's a lie too. There already is no turning back. I killed Templar after all. We knew what would happen. She knew he wouldn't listen to us, and that I'd be forced to fight him. We both did. Maybe that's why it happened, because just like me, she wanted to make sure that she couldn't change her mind. I should have taken that damn bracelet. Maybe the new Templar will have the good sense to stay out of it. My dry laughter is lost in the wind. Yeah, right. The burner phone is buzzing. I let out a sigh, staring at the screen for several moments before I press the button. How'd it go? I have one location. One? The bull says that there are two facilities in the area. And he didn't have both? No, but he promised to deliver the other one soon. Well, fuck. I guess we have to wait for now. Hmm. Send me the details, I'll scout. We shouldn't attack yet. They'll have too much time to prepare for the second strike. I'm not gonna attack. You're the one picking fights. I can't suppress a growl. I didn't. Yeah, I know. Either way, I'll stick to the shadows and see what we're dealing with. Fine. I have something else that might help us. The bull said that the Syndicate has some relic that amplifies magic. He sent someone to steal it away and agreed to give it to me. A relic? What kind? Dunno. Extends the range? Hmm. 
This could solve the problems we've been having. It will solve a problem we've been having, one of many, and not the most pressing right now. Assuming I can even use it. Why not? Man, okay, imagine I gave you a math problem in German. Could you solve it? I don't know. Maybe you could. You would recognize the numerals, maybe some words, but you'll still have to figure out what the problem even is, and then come up with a solution. I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Get the item, and I'll see if it's any good. The magic talk always flies over my head. Umbra knows it, but it doesn't matter as long as the magic does what we need. My understanding is irrelevant. I'll go now. What's your rush? I have a date. But what? With who? A bottle of vodka. Jacob. <sighs> How's your arm? Still aches. Well, sorry about that. I did what I could. I know. It doesn't matter. I can do my job. Your job right now is to lay low. Send me that location. I'll be in touch after I paid a visit. Fine. I return the phone to my pocket and let myself drift through the empty air. They'll make it all work. It's the promise we made to ourselves. It won't be long now. Why pick you an impossible battle? What? My body is suddenly heavy, thoughts become sluggish as my vision blurs. Am I falling? A voice I don't know has filled my head, but I can barely understand what it's saying. Did someone speak? Be this ambition? Love? No. It is anger. What? Fight then, my wolf. Let this be your gauntlet, victory or defeat. It matters not, only that you fight. The fog lifts. I'm... On another rooftop, staring down at the street. There's a lone car driving up the avenue, no people in sight. It's dark here. The light from the street lamps doesn't reach this high. Did something happen just now? I could swear I was just flying far above. I don't remember touching down. I half expect Umbra to jump out of the shadows in that unnerving way of his. He enjoys messing with my head far too much. But I'm certain that there's nobody else here. Fuck, I'm losing it. No, I lost it a long time ago. I turn from the shadows and look back to the city. All that's left now is to finish what we started. To be continued. So, that was basically the, uh, oh, you could click on these. Oh. Um, that was basically what is available for now. And this was released a little early, I guess, for the anniversary, the one year anniversary, or it's a two year anniversary of um, Supernova. But yeah. Huh. So I'm curious. Part of me is a little suspicious now that, well, at first I was suspicious that, oh, maybe this guy actually works for the government. And it turns out that he fought um, the old Templar in order to steal the bracelet for Greg and the rest of the government because somebody that uh that re somebody posted a comment in one of the videos that said that perhaps Greg wants the new Templar to join with the government in order to analyze the bracelet and reproduce it because it is one of the the powers that is not inherent to one person it's you can basically take the bracelet and then if you have the intent you can use it and become a Templar um so could it be possible that Greg already knows this and wants the bracelet to, again, reproduce it and create many Templars in order to have basically an army of superpowered individuals, basically an army of Iron Men? Um, yeah. So I'm wondering, based on what uh, this guy Jacob said, if they approached Templar because they're looking for some information that is only available to the Sentinels currently. Perhaps about this guy's brother, I'm assuming it's a brother, or somebody that he knew. And the Templar, you know, 
wasn't receptive to that idea and they ended up fighting. Perhaps because he's like, oh, you're a villain that I have to br uh, bring you in or something like that. And, you know, there was a fight and it was probably an unintentional fight. And it appears that perhaps um, instead of, you know, avoiding it and just running, that perhaps maybe the old Templar said something or did something which set off the wolf, which caused them to, you know, start fighting. Um, Umbra, um, the wolf, and Templar, and, you know, well, you know what happens. Templar dies. Hmm. But yeah, I am also suspicious about this female voice because if you look at the credit, the one of the credits, the main menu, you have all three characters right here, all three, you know, possible mentors. And then you have Unbound in the background sort of looming over all of them. And what is their signature color? Purple. So not knowing very little, and this is just conjecture, what if she is trying to manipulate this wolf and manipulate what is going on with him? Basically using him in order to start something or get some information or who knows, maybe she, since she is one of the founding members of the original group, what if she has basically turned evil? Because we don't, we know at the moment very little about her. Except that she's a senior member. Even the Baron is not a senior member. He's probably one of the older ones. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he's not a senior member. And it isn't impossible for superheroes to turn evil. It's very possible for them, you know, like, if you look at the, the whole, um... And I hate to keep comparing it to, like, DC and sometimes even Marvel. But, like, the whole, um... Injustice. Like, the comics and, like, the games... Um, where Superman turns evil after he's tricked into killing someone and destroying a certain city. But like, yeah, like maybe, maybe she's the, the villain behind this whole story. I'm just going off, you know, based on the purple. Who knows? Maybe it's, maybe she's not it. Maybe it's someone that can manipulate people's minds. Because her whole power, at least that we can see now, is being able to fly and being able to phase through things. But what if she has other powers that she developed over time that she just never disclosed because they were more useful, you know, being kept a secret? Hmm? Anyways, I guess this is stuff that we'll have to see later on. Anywho, so yeah, tell me what you thought about the interlude and the little tidbits of information that were released. And I'm curious this... Well, obviously... Um, as I said before, Nisus is the one that will have some dealings with magic, so I'm assuming that he might have something to do with when they're trying to steal the artifact. Obviously, they're probably gonna steal it. It's gonna get away from them. Maybe they're gonna... His search for the artifact is gonna lead Nick and him into running into, you know, the wolf. Who knows? Hmm. Anywho, so yeah, you know, write down in the comments what you think. And thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Supernova yourself, you can find it over on Itch, and you can find a direct link to it from the Supernova Twitter page, which I will link down in the description. And if you would like to support the project, I will also link down their Patreon, which usually nets you early access to builds of Super... well, of the visual novels. And, um... These guys usually do have a... Like, like, they'll release, like, certain, like, new sprites and other little things um, in their Patreon, so you get to see, like, new characters as they're coming. I think you would also be able to see the younger um, Templar, the old Templar, but a younger version of him in, the, you know, the Patreon, which I'm assuming it also means that we're going to eventually see or going to have a flashback or something about um, the old Templar. But yeah, anywho, but, but you'll get to see all that stuff before any of us. So if you're interested in Supernova, you know, consider supporting them or at least follow their Twitter for updates. But yeah, like I said, I will be doing Nieces more than likely when it gets updated, when it uh, gets released for public. You know, some people don't realize that there is a difference between the Patreon update and the public update. But yeah, anywho, um, 
I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.